<laughs> Welcome back to the Way Podcast. We're talking about Yahweh. Hello, Blake. It's Faye. We have a returning guest here with us today, everyone. In corner number two. <laughs> I feel like I had to talk like that because yeah. of the, the jersey. Oh, happy Super Bowl week. Oh, my God. Happy Valentine's Day oh week. Oh, my gosh. Wow, this is a big week. It is a big Valentine's, week. Valentine's, Super Bowl. Obviously, we're cheering for the... Actually, do you actually care? Or who are you actually cheering for? No, I, I want the Chiefs to oh, lose. Okay. If you're watching, we both have a matching Chiefs jerseys. Definitely. But literally, this we only got these jerseys for our event tomorrow for Super Bowl. And uh That's yeah, it. <laughs> like these are the only jerseys that will come before Super Bowl. So yeah. Super Bowl Sunday. So this is the only reason why I got it. But apparently she likes Patrick Mahomes. I love Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> Texas Tech alum. Those who get it, get it. So <laughs> <laughs> anyways. Not a Patrick Mahomes fan. I'm not a Mahomes fan. I'm not a Travis Kelsey fan. I'm hundred percent against Taylor Swift. Not a Taylor Swift fan. Oh my god. So yeah, I want them all to lose. What? But I mean, I love this jersey. So anyways, um, happy Super Bowl Sunday. I so just want to say I love all those people she just mentioned. Okay, yeah. go ahead. I don't know. She I honestly want to kick her out of our apartment because she vouches for Taylor Swift so much. And y'all know we hate her over here in these streets. She's such a we don't boss. hate her. We don't hate her. We just don't like her. Anyways, um. <laughs> <laughs> so by the time they're watching this the winner would have won i wonder who wins it's definitely gonna be the chiefs i'm prophesying in the name of jesus it is the 49ers okay wow yeah okay. taylor swift will be a loser um anyways <laughs> i still love our jerseys y'all go click on youtube if you're not if you're not watching so you can see our jersey it looks so cute um <laughs> so um, yeah, before we get into today's episode, oh, this is Adure, did I say her name? This Adure is back, everyone. Hi, guys. It took me all day to convince her to get on this episode. She's, she's right. Then I started praying and God told her to come on. Ah, we love him. Thank you, love it. Um, so, it's true. It's true. true. <laughs> so before we get into today's episode... Um, please like and subscribe on YouTube. Leave me five star rating on the podcasting platform you're listening on. Love y'all so much. Um, oh, we just reached 10K on the TikTok. Hey, How are we celebrating? We need to figure that out. I don't know. <laughs> literally tonight. I really want to awesome. celebrate when we get to 20K. Yeah, we literally just reached 10K on the TikTok tonight, so that's really exciting. Epic. But I really want to celebrate at 20K for some reason. 10k 10k on tiktok is like equivalent to 20k on instagram or 20k on instagram is equivalent to 10k on I, tiktok i see, I see like tiktok you're... is easier to grow i see what you're saying so anyways i just really want to celebrate at 20k i feel like you should celebrate here before you get there okay you know <laughs> <laughs> but i get what sure. you're saying <laughs> we could do it, both we could do I both i would say but if 20k comes quickly then you know, the celebrations will just be back to back. Have you seen, um, sorry, you can take this out. Have you seen um, Parag, who literally has celebrated every time he hit a million oh, and it's been every oh, day? I love him. I love him too, but it's he literally is so every day. so cute. He hit like five million, six, like every day. Really? I can't yeah. believe him celebrate every day. <laughs> yeah. But that's literally millions. No, for sure. Millions. And he has balloons in his car and everything. It's so cute. Oh, he's so cute. He's popping up on my For You page. He stops? Yeah, I don't see him anymore. He's still on Parag Talk. I love him. I need to find him again. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, do all that sweet stuff. Um, all right, uh, let's get right into today's episode. Okay, so we are continuing our series, Schemes of the Enemy. And today we are talking about how Satan is a manipulator. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But we are talking about that specifically on identity. Um, it's a big one. It's a big one. And I honestly felt like Adure literally was perfect for this episode because she's experienced this a lot more than I have and has, oh my gosh, like literally when we were sitting down coming up with the script for the night, she was just like spitting bar after bar. And I'm like, you literally have no choice now. You have to go on the episode. So. It wasn't me. I was literally just reading scripture. No, like. it was crazy what she was coming up with, though. Like, genuinely, I would have never came up with that stuff on my own. All the Lord. So, mm. glory to God. Yeah, glory, glory to God. God. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, yeah, y'all. So, where do we start? 
I want to read them the definition of manipulation. Oh, okay. That yes. is what I've been doing at the beginning of each episode. Uh-huh. It's just defining the word. I love it. And this is good, okay? What does manipulating someone mean? Manipulation is the exercise of harmful influence over others. Mm. That's crazy. That's good. That's such a powerful definition. Yeah. And such a Satan thing to mm-hmm. do, you know? Mm-hmm. So I don't know how I'm going to start this episode off. Like, we have a bunch of points. Again, I wanted a Dre on this episode because I do feel like she has a little bit more experience in this than I do. And I don't, I'm not saying that I'm perfect, but I am saying that this is just something that I, what did I say before we even hit record? I said, th- you've just been confident your whole yeah, life. Yeah, I've been really confident. And yeah. this is just something that a gift is truly from God. Mm-hmm. And so my experiences are minuscule mm-hmm. in this area. In this area. Yeah, that's fair to say. So you can take it from here. <sighs> Where do I start? How much do I say? Or whatever the Holy Spirit tells you to say. Okay. Okay. Well,. Yes, yeah, so I unfortunately have been attacked very heavily in this area. Um, thankfully, God's freed me from a lot of shame in it. But growing up, I just, I think what the problem was is that the Lord made me a very specific way, but somehow Satan always manipulated it to make me feel like it was wrong because it wasn't like what everyone else was, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I've always been like a very gentle and quiet, soft-spoken, meek person. And I remember growing up, I was always just the kind, nice girl. And nothing is wrong with that. That's actually the best, like one of the best traits you can have. But growing up, I told the story so many times, but people would get like the most athletic award or like the most talented, the most gifted. And I would always just get like Miss Congeniality, which is just an award for being nice. And I remember like crying to my mom one day. I was like, literally, I have no gifts. Like, I'm just nice. I'm just nice. And obviously that's like the most important thing. But growing up later on, like when I got deeper in my faith, I was studying Romans 12 and it talks about how kindness is literally a spirit, like a spiritual gift to be kind and that like blew my mind because I've never like that's just always been who I am you know Mm -hmm. and then even with being gentle and meek and soft like those are all godly traits Mm. so it's just the way that Satan made me feel like I was some weirdo when in reality like Jesus made me that way and it was so special Mm -hmm. you know and we always tell this story (laughs) because she always says how she didn't want to win Miss Congeniality, which AKA is the kind award and how she wanted yeah. to be most athletic or whatever, whatever. <laughs> true. And I won most athletic <laughs> in so our, my senior year of high school. Yeah. So the award she wanted, I wanted, <laughs> and I cannot tell you how insignificant that award yeah. was. Yeah. Like it felt like something at the time, but I wasn't like a good person mm-hmm. and high school because I didn't know the Lord you know and so like it's just thinking back on like I would have killed to win Miss Congeniality you think the grass is greener on the other side I feel like you always just want what you what you don't have at the time though well we didn't even have this award oh really we only had like Miss Athletic or Most Athletic Uh Guy and Girl okay Most Good Looking Guy and Girl Biggest Flirt Guy and Girl okay we had that I think we had Most like Fashionable Guy and Girl and like the super superficial awards you know oh class clown okay i think we had that yeah but nothing of importance like dang you know but that's just like when you're in middle school like that's what you care about is 100 who thinks i'm funny who thinks i'm pretty who thinks that you know no if i didn't win most athletic i would have went and cried in the bathroom (laughs) i literally started campaigning because one of my very close friends was also like neck and neck with me amanda Okay. And I literally remember the having a talk with her. Crazy. I'm like, Amanda, if you win, I must have let it. Like, it's fine. Like, but like, no, I wanted it so <laughs> bad. And I remember my mom, did I tell you this? No. My mom was a substitute teacher. No way. Yeah, and she was subbing that day. They announced it over the intercom. <gasps> and I was sitting in her classroom. Uh-huh. And when they said, most athletic girl, Victoria Baldwin, <laughs> me and my mom were like, yeah! <laughs> I can picture this. It's a classroom. <laughs> I was like, yay! Was Amanda in that class? 
<laughs> no, she okay. wasn't in that class. All the but name me and my mom discussion. and all the little kids, because I was in a smaller, lower classman classroom. Oh. She was subbing him. Uh-huh. And all the like freshest hot was like, congrats, congrats. It was oh. so funny. Sorry, y'all, this is not the topic of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that story though. Yeah. I didn't know she was a sub. Yeah. She That's literally so only subbed to keep an eye on me and my sister. And right when I graduated, she stopped subbing. Yeah. Helicopter yeah. mom. She, she had goals. She had but priorities. we love her. We love her. She was we great. Do. I used to be in all her classrooms. Okay. What? Sorry. <laughs> okay. This is a side of the point. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Anyway, that was my experience. Yeah. So. And, and um, I had an episode a little far back on like, the episode where it was titled for the girl who feels like she's too little or too much. And I talked about how exactly how God made us is exactly how Satan will attack us. Yes. I eat so good attack our identities Mm -hmm. and how I have a huge personality and I'm so like, and like, I, I feel (laughs) Satan attacking me in a way of like, you're too much. Like, no one's ever going to love you. Like, for the rest of your life, like, you're crazy. Like, you drive someone up, up the wall. And whereas, like, Adiria has the complete opposite personality of me, and God's, or Satan's telling her she's not enough. Yeah. Like, you're too quiet. You're too gentle. You're right. too meek. You're too weak. Da, 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 da. Right. And that's how God made her. She's not too anything. Everything she is, is perfect. Oh, you know? It's very sweet. Also, like, I have always been a very emotionally intelligent person too like even Mm. as a child i was so compassionate for people like people i would cry over driving past a homeless person or even when we're at conference and seeing like people homeless on the street like that literally like breaks my soul and i remember growing up my mom would always like yell at me for crying so much or my friends like would make fun of me and say like you're just so sensitive but now I'm like, wait, but that's such a like God trait too to just 100%. like care for people, mm-hmm. you know? So yeah, and I just love how God works because Adure is the complete opposite of me. Mm-hmm. But those are gifts from God, mm-hmm. and even the opposite traits of me are gifts from God. So good, like her uh, gentleness is yeah. such a gift. My boldness is such so a gift. Good. Her, she still has a great personality, but mm-hmm. it's just. A little bit more low key. Mm-hmm. That's such a gift. Mm-hmm. My personality, like again, like unfortunately, you always know I'm in the room. I, I, I it's annoying. <laughs> Don't know why God made me that way, but it's a gift. Do you gift. know that is a gift? And so again, <laughs> y'all, the way God has made you, Satan is 100 percent going to manipulate you into thinking that that's not right. There's yeah. something wrong. Yeah, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with you yeah Ugh. and then it's, it's it just like a, it's like a never-ending pit because then you'll mm. try to change how you are and then you're still unhappy so like regardless mm. it's just you're constantly trying to change but the best thing to do is just to accept how god made you 100 percent. so don't listen to the lie yeah and think about how much <clears throat> god loves you like the yeah. way he, he you know what what I just saw this on Instagram, okay. but God does not only love you. He likes you. Yeah. He likes the way he made you. God is our friend. Jesus is our friend and yeah. he's not going to want to hang out with you if he didn't like you. You know what I'm saying? And by liking you, he likes the way he made you. He yeah. likes the personality. You make him laugh. Yeah. I know me and Adore make Jesus <laughs> chuckle all the time. Like I can hear, sure. I can feel the chuckle, yeah. you know? Yep, yep. And so like, just know that Jesus would not want to be your friend if he didn't like your personality Yeah. or how he made you. Mm-hmm. That's just so counter to, to God. Like it's just so just not God it's, for us to think that we are, there's something wrong right. with us do you see what i'm saying yes i also was gonna say you know it's an attack from the enemy when it's just toward you because i could never say the things i would say to myself to a friend or to Mm. someone around me or even a complete stranger but somehow in my mind i thought it was fine to do it to me even though like god looks at me the same way like i could never like we've talked about this before but you just don't see yourself the way i see you yeah what's the thing you always say i wish you could see yourself through my eyes no, you don't know what it's like to be on the other side of you or something yeah. like that. Something profound. I'm like, dang, that's so deep. <laughs> but it's true. Like you don't. You only yeah. like for some reason you just can't see what's special about yourself sometimes. Yeah. But that's 
a lie from the enemy. Yeah, one hundred percent. Sorry, now we have to move. The some of the examples we have. Okay, this is the first one I wrote down, y'all. You don't got to chime in on this because I know okay. you don't want to get hate, but I will get all the hate. I don't care. I will tell the truth. Y'all, the attack on our generation when it comes to the manipulation of our identity, i.e. little boys waking up saying, I identify as she, her, and little girls waking up saying they identify as he, him, or full grown adults literally saying I, th- I'm a they, them, which is not grammatically correct, and uh, saying call me Z, X, just all types of crazy nonsense. And I'm just like, y'all, literally every time I think about that or talk about that, I feel nothing. I literally get goosebumps because it is nothing but Satan. Because all of that is the spirit of confusion. That is no fruits of the spirit from from the Holy Spirit, from God at all. You, and I, I'm sorry if this is, if you are someone who are struggling with your identity like this, but I do want you to know that it is an attack. And that it is not God that is urging you to wake up and change how he made you. You were made on purpose and you were made for such a time as this. And I don't, that is Satan a hundred percent will want to confuse you on that. That is why we, we are seeing something we've never seen before with these, with these people waking up, literally changing their identity. Gender, gender fluidity is, is a thing where you wake up one day and you feel like this one gender, you wake up the next day, you feel like another gender and it's our responsibility as your peers to know what you are that day. <laughs> like, how are we supposed to know that? Anyways, that is confusion. That is yeah. one of the biggest attacks on our generation to this day mm-hmm. is thinking that it's acceptable to just wake up and do that and it's normalizing it. That's not normal, y'all. Yes. They also start really young, too. <gasps> really very young. Like, why are we allowing a 12-year-old to decide why if they don't want to be a boy anymore, if they don't want to be a girl anymore? Bro, literally, I do not care if I get canceled, but I, I recently ran into, and you know Atlanta's very um, progressive. Yeah, is that the word? Yeah. For, yeah. Like, they yeah. welcome this stuff. Yeah. And um, I met an older woman recently and very, like, pro this um giving her daughter the oh. option to choose her identity and wow. asking her daughter like what are your pronouns and how old's her daughter like 12 wow yeah and like giving her the option to like <clears throat> giving her an op- the option to choose, choose like what she how she wants to dress and stuff and i'm like that's crazy I feel like at 12 years old, if my parents like allowed me to do that, I would be like, I feel like at that point you have sense and you're just like, what are you even like? Yeah. If my mom did that to me at 12, I'd be like, what are you even saying? Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like no, at thousand that percent. point, there is sense, you know? And yeah. so I just feel like, I don't know. I just, I, I truly would love to see our generation free of that. Yeah. And I don't want to carry that on into the next generation. Like, I, I just don't. Like, I, I, I could literally talk all day about that. And sorry if this offends you. But anyways, <laughs> the next um topic we have with how he specifically attacks women is, uh like, beauty standards. Mm-hmm. Uh, We feel like we're too not pretty enough or... Mm-hmm. Whatever. There's so many yeah. ways to just so many things. Too thin, too fat, too mm-hmm. ugly. Not everything. Yeah. Everything. Eyes too far apart. You know, <laughs> just <laughs> literally anything. <So> random. <laughs> no, literally, literally. No, there's yeah. a new thing every time. A new thing every time. Things that I like don't think I've ever noticed about myself. You get on TikTok and it's like I didn't even realize that was an issue. Mm-hmm. Like the whole um the guasha thing. Like, oh, yeah. who even knew that was, like, such a big deal to have a chiseled face? They called it something, like, specific. But, yeah. I know, girl. I saw that. I, I think we saw the same video this <laughs> I morning because I also saw a gosh video <laughs> this morning. <laughs> we have the same for you, Paige. We do. But, um... But yeah, I almost bought my guasha again, brought it back out, and I'm like, it won't work. I've tried. 
But anyways, yeah, just all the ways that he attacks. Sorry, y'all. Also, if I'm yawning, it's literally almost midnight right now. So just ignore me. Um, But yeah, just the women's beauty standards. Like, that is something I feel like TikTok has really honed in on us for real. Like, yeah seeing all these beautiful girls at our fingertips Mm -hmm. and it's like like dang like and and i feel like i fell in this is something i fell into Mm -hmm. of like seeing all these beautiful women on tiktok Mm -hmm. and i'm like bro if my man can see this woman he's not gonna want me dang you know like she's so pretty like if that is an option for him right why would he want me you know you know but i had to get off of tiktok a little bit when my brain started going there for real well, yeah, comparison. Because sure. I think that's, I've once heard someone say that comparison is sinful on both sides. Like mm-hmm. if you think that you're better than someone, that's pride. And then if you think you're less than someone, that's insecurity. In both, yeah. both ways, like it's both it's are pride. Sin. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> attacking women in ways of thinking that we are not the prize. Oh, this is a doozy. Y'all. And now, thing. because Satan has attacked our identity as a woman, thinking that we are not the prize, now we are settling dating trash men. Girl. We are crying over somebody's son that don't know how to treat you. Girl. Because Satan has told you that you are not the prize. Mm. Hold up. I'm about to start preaching. <laughs> give her room. Give, give her a- room. <laughs> We're ready. Because I genuinely cannot scream from the rooftops loud enough of how much you are the prize Mm -hmm. this is why me and adure are single (laughs) because me and adure know we are the prize baby Mm -hmm. okay and and trust me there are options to settle they're there but because we know who we are and whose we are come on We are not about to settle for something that is literally going to bring us down. Yeah. And not in like a I'm better than you way, but in a spiritual way. It's called being unequally yoked. Come on. There are too many plans and purposes and visions that God has over our life for us to settle for these men who don't know the Lord. Yeah. We are the prize. And I will never forget this. Years ago, Sadie Robertson. Come on. She was single. Uh Uh-huh. And I love that she was single mm-hmm. because she, me and Sadie are like the same age. Mm-hmm. And um, I just felt like she was like my girl, you know, Aww. like she's she single in Sadie. ministry. I'm single in like pursuing ministry. Like I love Sadie and relatable. Aww, yeah. Then she got a man, <laughs> Christian Huff, her husband today. Uh-huh. She hard launched him. And I remember thinking how I posted this on my Instagram years ago. I said to somebody, I said, does Christian even know how lucky he is to to have Sadie? (laughs) Yeah. And then God literally said, the same goes for you. That's so good. The man that gets you, does he even know how lucky he is to make you his? Yeah. Like, and I swear it was so profound because I had never thought that like, I was like, I eat on the same level of Sadie of like, mm. if a wow, I am a prize. Like, mm. oh my gosh, she's so lucky to have me. <laughs> like, why was I so quick to think that about Sadie, but not think that about myself? Yeah. And God snatched me up so quick and yeah. was telling me like, girl, you better, you, yes, you too, mm-hmm, you know? Mm-hmm. And so I just really feel like that is such an attack on women. That's so good. And hear <sighs> us, we're not saying that we're better than. We're not no. saying, like, we're not trying to make ourselves some high and mighty and saying we're better than and we're the perfect women. We're just saying we're different from. Because not every guy is going to be the type of guy that we need. Like, we need men of standard, of godliness, mm-hmm. of honor, of mm-hmm. dignity. Mm-hmm. Men that don't look like the world. They're in the world, but they're not of the world. Men that are in the church, are planted in the church. Can we bring back men who know how to serve? Right. Like, what do you mean you're going to church every week and you're just sitting in the in the, the audience? Like, mm-hmm. what do you mean? Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. I just feel like there's a standard. So I'm not saying, like, when we say there are options and we're not choosing them, it's not like we're saying we're better than those 100%. men. We're just saying, like, there's a standard. and mm-hmm. We know? know whose we are. 
Yeah. That's the only thing I keep going back to. We yeah. know whose we are. Yeah. And, and that takes me to one of the points I had in here. It's kind of out of order, but it said, I wrote it down. I said, when you know who you are, you know how to live. Mm-hmm. And I'm sorry, y'all. And, and, and hey, thank you, Holy Spirit. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't even think about this. I've been on the other side. I didn't know who I was. Okay. I was. I did not belong to God. Yeah. I was of the world. Mm-hmm. I tried it the worldly way. I dated trash men when I tell you trash. Yes. And so like, it's just coming from that, from over there, yeah. I'm like, oh my God. Like, it's like a crazy revelation mm-hmm. of I know, I know who I, who's I am. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Every time I think about the guys I've dated yeah. in the past, I literally apologize to God. I'm like, God, I'm so, so like, I'm sorry. I didn't yeah. even know. Yeah. I mean, it literally reminds me of this is so. <gasps> not- <I'm gonna> <laughs> sorry, Jesus. I love you so much. That's beautiful. I feel like a disappointment. I'm sorry. Continue. Why? Just from when I was doing what I was just being dumb. Well, that's what I was going to say is we were studying Luke 15 in my small group this Mm -hmm. week. And something we talked about was how when the prodigal son, when he left his father, blew all the money away, he literally was lower than the pigs. And it says once he came to the realization that, wait, like I could I could be treated better than this at my father's house. He went back home and his father literally ran. It literally says, I think I read somewhere that, um, or I heard somewhere that when a father's running in the olden days, that actually was a sign of embarrassment and shame. So the fact that he was running toward his, his son, he didn't care about that. He cared about mm. just being reunited with his child. Yeah. And so anyway, when father says, let's throw a feast for him, like this is my son, that's who he's always been. He just didn't realize when he was in the pit, lost all his money in the mud with the pigs yeah. he like forgot who he was so yeah. no i just always think about that because it's like your your value never changes it's just the way that you view yourself that gets warped and that's what gets dangerous mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. that's good that's good and with some of the attacks on men y'all this is really like i really am playing russia roulette uh because if this makes it on the wrong side of tiktok <laughs> or the wrong side of instagram i could really be it's okay getting some not for men. Some death threats. Oh, um, Lord. I've gotten death threats before. No, you're kidding. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. 100%. It's usually on my, like, my my TikTok, my TikTok, TikTok, where I've talked about celebrities, oh. and they went dumb viral. That's when the death threats came in, because it would make it on their fan for you pages. I'm like, we hate you. So, oh, my and I'm, gosh. Oh, sorry, y'all. Um, I'll boop that out. <laughs> but, like. <laughs> oh, my god. But, yeah. Anyways. So the <laughs> attacks on men, I wrote men not being men. That is literally the attack. <laughs> That's crazy. The, how do you not see the attack on the identity? Yeah. Men are not being men. We literally went from men going to war to painting nails and doing TikTok dances and shaking it to the camera. Like that's where, where we, how did we get here? They're so lazy. Wearing blouses. Why are we wearing? <laughs> Jesus, help me, Lord Jesus. Why are we wearing women clothing? I don't understand. Us in, in men jersey. <laughs> in cargo pants. Oh, I got on leggings. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, like, our, what, are, what, are our, what are our men doing? <laughs> What are our men doing? I don't no. understand. Truly, it's it's so bad. It's so, no, it's so bad. bad. Like this is just. I, I feel like the direction our men are going is just not how God designed it. Point blank, period. period. And we can literally see this. We can literally see this from the beginning of time. And yeah. this is what, and I've literally talked about Adam and Eve in every episode so far with the schemes of the enemy, but that's just how applicable it is to every True. scheme of the enemy. Like it's yeah. just such a powerful piece of scripture. And yeah. I like elaborate on it. You were, you were the one that started going off. Well, I was going verse by verse. So you want to pull it up? Yeah. Okay. 
So really, this starts in Genesis 2 when God makes Adam and Eve because you have to see where their identity was supposed to be. So so it says, and this is verse 7, Then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into the man's nostrils, and the man became a living person. Then the Lord God planted a garden of Eden in the east, and there he placed the man he had made. The Lord God made all sorts of trees to grow from the ground, and in the middle of the garden he placed a tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. (coughs) So the Lord God placed the man there, this is verse 15, in the garden of Eden to tend to it and to watch over it. But the Lord God warned him, you may freely eat from the fruit of every tree in the garden, except the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Notice how he tells Adam, okay? He warns Adam. Then, verse 18, God said, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make him a helper who is just right for him. So the Lord God formed from the ground, brought the man Chose the man to fall into a deep sleep. And when the man slept, the Lord God took one of his ribs, closed the opening, and the Lord God formed woman from the rib. Okay, so that's how Adam and Eve were made. That's what they were created to do. Adam was meant to tend to the garden. Eve was meant to be the helper. Okay, the last verse says, now the man and his wife were both naked, but they felt no shame. Okay, that was how it was meant to be. Now, the problem with Adam was the woman was convinced so she took the fruit and ate it to her and then ate it and then she gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it too so the problem with adam was his laziness one and his passiveness because he was meant to lead he was meant to tend to the garden he was the one who was warned by god in the first place do not eat the fruit and yet somehow he was swayed by his wife He was passive, like just waited around while she disobeyed a direct order from the Lord. And he allowed her not only to eat the fruit, but then he allowed her to convince him that this was what was right. So I think we see this a lot in our in our generation with just like men being passive and lazy and just not being men like you're meant to lead. You're meant to step up and direct your wife, you know. So then the problem with Eve is she was meant to be the helper. But instead of helping, she actually led him astray because she didn't know the truth herself. And because she was not the one one that was warned directly, not that that matters, but she allowed the enemy to convince her that God was not um, being truthful. Mm -hmm. So really, he didn't attack her. He attacked her view of God, which Mm -hmm. ultimately is what led to her identity being attacked. One of the things that uh, Adore said when we were going over this before we hit record was the plan what makes the manipulation of adam and eve's identity so like almost profound was that god created them to be naked Mm -hmm. and literally created them to just dwell with him Mm -hmm. and as soon as satan manipulated their identity that was when they put on clothes and and it says they hid from god they hid from god the very the very god that created them to be naked to dwell that way they were now hiding from him and putting on clothes yeah like literally as soon like as soon as the the identity was attacked they went the opposite way. Instead of mm-hmm. being with God, they hid. Mm-hmm. Instead of being naked and dwelling, they went and uh, clothed themselves. Clothed themselves. Yeah. And so do you see the manipulation of the identity and why that is so, like Satan confused them on mo- almost into them acting outside of character, i.e. being a son or, or daughter of God. Yeah. And... That is just genuinely how he still works today, Mm y'all. Like, the goal of of Satan attacking our identities is just so, so many. But the ones that we have written, it says, if he warps how we see ourselves, um, we will take ourselves out. Um, And it wrecks our 
intimacy with God. Um, and then I also put, when you know who you are, you know how to live. And so it, it, as soon as Adam and Eve didn't no longer knew who they were, they didn't know how to live. They started hiding. They started putting on clothes. They were supposed to be naked, you know, like they were yeah. supposed to just dwell, but instead they, they, Ran. what did we say? Di no, we, instead of dwelling, they did or dwelling, oh, they do or something yes, like that. Yes, yes. Um, they started striving and I'm telling you, as soon as Satan can convince you who you are not, that is when the striving comes. So that good. is when the acting out of a character comes and that's why it is so important for you to know and stand firm in who God has made you and called you to be. And I truly, like when I think about how much Satan has had such a chokehold on our generation when it comes to our identity, and a huge part of that mm -hmm. is social media and scrolling yeah. and all of that stuff, like... Mm -hmm. I, I, again, I've said this every episode, but I don't want him to win. I don't want him to win our identities. Like I want us to stand firm and be children of God and just dwell in his presence. But also what we do for God is an overflow of our identity of us being so firm and confident and who God has made us not manipulation from the enemy. Mm -hmm. I think the way that he manipulates too is it's like the double mindedness. So like if you make the decision to follow God, you have to be sure of it. You have to be sure of, I believe what he says about me is truth. And I'm going to believe that. And I think that's the problem with Eve. Cause even with Satan, like if you notice the first thing he asked is he questioned what God said. He said, did God really say? And then when God finds out that they ate, ate the fruit, he asked them, but who told you? Cause they were listening to voices that were not his. So really mm -hmm. you have to remind yourself what voices am I listening to mm -hmm. and hold it up to the truth mm -hmm. and remind yourself, what am I believing? Mm -hmm. And don't be double-minded. Mm -hmm. Like if I say I'm believing in God, this is truth. Remind yourself. That's what, that's my, that is ultimate above 100%. everything else. You know, a hundred percent. And if your identity is ever attacked, it is because a voice has seeped in there that is not God. Come on. It could be you. It could be Satan. It, I don't know yeah. where the root has come from, but it's not God. Yeah. And so, and what, what someone is, this is the Holy Spirit, but someone is asking, well, what even is my identity? You are a daughter of God. That is your identity. Yeah. Point blank period. There's literally nothing else to add. Yeah. That is who you are. That is what you are. That is how you are created. In Genesis 2, it literally says he made man out of his image. God literally made you out of his image. And again, going back to the beginning of this episode, he not only loves you, he, he not only made you, he not only loves you, but he also likes you. Yeah. You're his daughter. You're his friend, you know? And so yeah. that's who you are. What does it mean to be a daughter of God? You just literally dwell with him and you do life with him and you just go wherever he wants you to go and yeah. do whatever he wants you to do and love him while y'all, y'all are doing it together. <laughs> like that's genuinely what it means to live and be a daughter of God. Yeah. And there is so much freedom in being here and not being confused at who we are not trying to strive and be someone that we're not right that's exhausting yeah and you can only go so far before you come to the end of yourself right and so genuinely y'all just please rest what we were honestly created to do until adam and eve screwed it all up <laughs> rest in just yeah. being his daughter yeah what a gift it is mm -hmm. to be his daughter. <laughs> I love being his daughter. Like genuinely. Yeah. It, it's just the best. Yeah. There's nothing better. There's nothing greater. There's nothing more important. Like the most important thing about me is the fact that I am a daughter of God. Not my career, not anything I'll achieve, not eventually being a wife, not eventually being a mom, like the greatest title I could ever have. I already have. You already have. Regardless of what you do, regardless of who like who you're attached to, if you have kids, if you have a husband, a spouse, like the most important thing will always be that you're already chosen. 
you're already chosen. And when you know you are chosen, you won't be crying over somebody's dusty son. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Because you know that the king of the universe chooses you. Amen. So if this dusty, wussy little boy who don't even know the Lord, who is barely a son of God, doesn't choose you, you're going to walk with your chest, head held high, chest out. I am a daughter of the king. No bad. I don't even need this boy. God, is, I am one man away from being with the, with the guy that God has called me to be. Right. You better stand up and you best to know. <laughs> <laughs> who you are right. and it's going to save you from so much yes. hurt and heartache yeah and it's it's just so fun i cannot explain to y'all how fun it is and so what were you about to say i don't remember but you're on fire i love I, it i'm just like <laughs> y'all best to know who y'all is that's all i got to say <laughs> Oh my lord. And if you are struggling, I feel like we should give practical advice. Like, okay. okay, if they are struggling with their identity, they hear the truth, they understand that they are a daughter or a son of God, but they're having trouble believing it, like practically walking in it. What advice are we giving? Read your Bibles. That's Love literally it. been my my number one thing. Number one thing because that's our sword when it yeah. comes to the enemy's weapons. Yeah. Uh read your Bibles literally drown yourself in truth um yeah everything that you are believing you are that is opposite of god write it down yeah. and write down the scripture next to like the truth next to it if you are believing that you are i don't know a uh, worthless whatever write the scripture next to it that combats the truth like literally fight with scripture like i literally said every episode that is how you fight the schemes of the enemy yeah. the schemes this every scheme it's a different font but they're all lies right and so you're gonna have to cover it with truth i.e yeah. god's word don't go googling nothing literally go to the word yeah that is the truth and keep repeating it in the mirror until christian affirmations until you believe it <laughs> and it might take some months, but until you believe who you are, you're going to have to keep fighting. You're going to have to keep fighting. And so that's my practical advice is literally and surround yourself with better friends. A dirty always good. calls out the good in me. And, Aww. and I don't see it half the time. I just be existing. And she's like, Oh my, I was so sweet when you did that. I'm like, did what? I was just existing, you know? And so literally, and surround yeah. yourself with people who encourage you. Like, stop, yeah. stop allowing people in your life that are speaking death over you. Like, okay, so crazy that you say that. We're so in sync. Because I was gonna say this kind of goes with it, but pray for help too. Like, don't try and do it by your own strength if you truly just like cannot see with your own eyes. Because I feel like that's what happened with me when I was growing up. Was a lot of my friends they just were complete opposite from me which is totally fine but they made me feel like something, something was wrong, wrong with, with you me. exactly yeah. and so I remember praying about it and just asking God like help me to see like I want to see myself the way you see me and I this is one of the th only things I've ever heard God tell me about this but he said I will teach you how to love yourself and so just be patient that is so freaking sweet right like that makes me want to cry i know and he did that's what's so beautiful is it took a while but when i asked for help like you don't have to try and like fix yourself before you go back to god like just take your insecurity your your fear whatever it is just take it back to god and he will help you mm -hmm. he will help you get back to that whole state mm -hmm. that you're meant to be before the broken state of the fall mm -hmm. so and a prayer to pray is God, give me your eyes to see me. Yeah. Pray that until you see yourself. Yeah. Literally, I've said this before, and y'all might think I'm psycho, but I literally, every time I walk by the mirror, I try to say something positive. So earlier today, I was like doing my hair, and I was like, you're so pretty. Love you. Mwah. And like <laughs> literally just walked out the bathroom talking to myself in the mirror. Like you yeah. genuinely have to talk to yourself that way yeah. because it, it, I, I just cannot explain to you how much it helps to speak life over yourself mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like oh my gosh it is just night and day it is yeah. night and day and we are so quick to speak death and ill things over ourselves why is it mm. abnormal to say you're so pretty love you Mwah. bye in the right. mirror but it's so normalized to be like you're fat oh and like what
what? What is, what is the, this world that we're living in? It doesn't make any sense. Everything yeah. is backwards. No, truly. I mean, it's upside down. It's literally upside down. I'm honestly scared for us. But that's a prayer to pray. Pray for God to give you the eyes to see yourself the way he sees you. And he will. And also maybe limit how much time you are on social media. If you see it being a a rabbit hole of comparison. Or maybe just like do a deep dive of who am I following? Yeah, You know, like who just also be cautious of where your thoughts lead. But also what triggers those thoughts. Like, what causes you to constantly say the same thought over and over again? Mm. Find that, cut that out Mm. of your life, whatever that is. And and once your identity is in check, I think you would, I think this is the Holy Spirit, but you would be amazed at what God calls you to do, like what doors he opened. Because I truly feel like there's a lot of things he's holding back because you don't even know who you are. Wow. God cannot send you through these doors or i.e. elevators, what we talked yeah. about earlier. Yeah. He can't let you walk through these doors when you are not even secure in you being his daughter. Mm-hmm. He knows the wind will take you here and there. You have to be secure. And I'm talking yeah. stand firm in your identity yeah. in order for God to be able to use you the way that he wants to use you. Mm-hmm. And again, none of this is striving. It's just getting your heart right for what God has for you. Yeah. But that's one of the thing I said last episode. That's one of the reasons Satan attacks is because he knows if he can get you down and believe, make you make you believe all these lies and get you in the drown you in sh- shame and condemnation. Yeah. He knows that that is ultimately going to keep God's purpose from prevailing in your life because your eyes are not on God. Mm-hmm. And so it's just a literal cycle. You have to get your identity in order. You cannot let Satan win on this. This is so important. It truly, it's like the most important thing. 100%. You'll never be able to be joyful, like actually enjoy life the way God intends to because every relationship you'll be in, like they'll be your center. Mm -hmm. And at any time that they don't affirm you, then you're crushed. But like you have to remember what God says. Like that is your literal north star nothing else matters except that and you are not your race you are not your nationality you are not you are a child of god period you know what priscilla shire i say this all the time that is my woman i freaking love priscilla shire (laughs) but she always says i am not a black woman like that is not how i identify i am a christian woman a follower of christ a daughter of god who yeah. just happens to be black. Right. And Priscilla always talks about how she feels like nowadays we put too much emphasis on the color of our skin. Like yeah. in, in at the end of the day, it is you are a follower of Christ. Mm-hmm. God is your father. You are his daughter. And everything else is just a happen to be secondary. Mm-hmm. Like that's just how identity yeah. works when it comes with God. You are not a wife first. You are not a mother first. First, you are literally a daughter of God first. Everything else is secondary and an addition onto literally what God has gifted you to to be. That's not what you were born. Do you know what I'm saying? No, a thousand percent. Same is said for literally anything else. Like your Mm -hmm. sexuality, like doesn't matter. No, literally doesn't matter. If you're a heterosexual, okay, that's (laughs) not your identity. If you're the other way around, not your identity. I also heard someone say one time that your flesh tries to get you to sin or to like just be stuck in these negative thought patterns because your flesh isn't actually reaping the the repercussions of it. Like they're not dealing with the consequences because once you get to heaven, it's just your soul. Like your flesh doesn't go with you. Mm -hmm. And so like you have to just keep eternity in mind too. Like even if I feel this way, I'm still going to submit to what I know is truth. What I know is eternal. Because this flesh is not going with you after this life. It's not going with you. Like, it's just point blank, period. Yeah. Eternity is what matters. Yeah. And even if I feel this way, you can acknowledge what you feel, mm-hmm. but then also know that your feelings aren't God. So at the same time, you have to submit back to. Feelings are fleeting. Yeah. Feelings temporary. 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 <laughs> For sure. Literally, we, we'll be so mad in one minute and the next minute, like, 
<laughs> so we're in it like literally just so, so bleeding yeah. so temporary and so that's why feelings is such a dangerous guide if they will yeah. almost nine times out of ten always lead you astray true and i feel like that maybe was eve's downfall was she thought that, oh, this fruit is going to be something good, but she didn't actually think through, like, what are the repercussions of this at the end? Mm -hmm. And I think if we lived life that way, like, what would actually happen if I got this one thing that I really want? If it's mm -hmm. attract attractive, like, even me being a, in middle school wanting to be the most athletic, like, what do I actually think that would have done for me? Literally yeah. nothing. You said it was literally just a trophy on your shelf. Was it even a trophy or a certificate? I don't know. Girl, I think it was just a picture in the yearbook. I don't even think we got oh. anything. Those were certificates. Uh, nothing that matters. Sorry. Actually, now that you think about it, I think it was certificates. Okay. I'm, I'm seeing a flashback of the picture, and I think we, we were holding something. Me and AJ smiling. AJ. Yeah, he was a cutie. <sighs> yeah, it's gone. All right. Hopefully I said it. But anyways, y'all, <laughs> any last words before we wrap up? <laughs> Um, just remember who you are. You are loved. You are chosen. You are the head and not the tail. You are the first and not the last. You are just so loved. So loved. We love you. And beautiful. And beautiful. I always just want to tell girls how beautiful they are. Truly. Like, y'all are so pretty. I don't even know who, who you are. But also, can I say, sorry, we're trying to wrap but one thing about Jesus, it literally says that he was not attractive to human eyes in the Bible. Is he really? <laughs> yes. Look, we, could look, we could look up the verse. But it literally said like he was just a, like you would pass him on the street. Like you would not think anything of his looks. Jesus. And this is literally the savior of the world who was not like this most beautiful model. He was just an average Jesus. Joe. You know? I love him. So it's like, why do we care? I bet Jesus is so cute. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see him in heaven. I need proof. We always talk about if we were in, in biblical <laughs> times, would God write, put us in the Bible and tell us or tell everybody we were attractive like he yeah, did yeah. with uh, Joseph, Rachel and Joseph and Samson and yeah, yeah. You know, yeah all yeah, of them. Yeah, yeah. Like they were, they were, what, what did they say in the Bible? Like they were nice to the they eyes were, or something? Yeah, something like that. Like Joseph was. And I'm like, I wonder what you could say that about me. <laughs> Am I nice to the eyes back then? <laughs> I know. I wonder. Probably not. But it doesn't say anything about Esther. No, it does. Or was it Ruth? One of them was described as pretty. I don't think it was Ruth. It was. It was definitely in like Genesis Exodus because like the the uh. All the men wanted to sleep with Joseph. Was it Abraham's wife? Oh, Sarah. Sarah. One of them was very nice to the eyes. And the Bible's very clear that they were very pretty women. Could be. Could be. Anyways, yeah, anyways. we just wonder if we would be one of them. But, uh, um, yeah. Cool. <laughs> Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. Thanks for talking about identity with me. Hey, it's just my testimony, really. Yeah. It's crazy. The Lord can deliver. I just love how far he's brought you. That's amazing. That's amazing. And honestly, me too, in a in a completely different way. Yeah. But it's just our stories are so different because you've always known Jesus. That's true. Like even the stuff that you were exuberating as a kid, like that was the fruits of the spirit. I didn't have that. Well, <laughs> that's true. But at the same time, I mean, it comes with cons as well. Do you remember when we were at Think Conference and I literally was questioning if I should get baptized again? Because I didn't know if my faith was really mine. Because I just always grew up in the church. Do you remember this? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember <laughs> so that. So there, there are cons to both sides. I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> like, you should, should you give up sex again? Anyways. Um, we almost did it, too, in the bathtub. Oh, it blares. I remember I literally got my hair done right before my baptism. Because oh. my mom wanted us to be all yeah. pretty and literally dip my hair in water and ruin <laughs> the whole thing. My mom was pissed. <laughs> they didn't have shower cups? That's no, girl, I went to white church. That's about to say. Very anti-black. I don't accommodate to black people. <laughs> anyways, uh, love you, though. Mwah. Um, so, anyways, this is the end of the episode. <laughs> um, like and subscribe. Do all the things I said at the beginning. And convince Adore to be a permanent co-host. <laughs> and, yeah. Love you guys. Yeah. I'm sad. I don't want to end it. Oh. <laughs> Y'all got my February nails done today. It's so interesting because you don't like the color of my Stanley cup. Yeah. <laughs>
colors are limited at that midtown at that midtown uh nail salon no is that midtown it's by the place that i want us to get our juices at I, I love them though yeah, right i love them giving barbie really yeah oh my gosh um, all right. Oh, I literally forgot we were recording. Um, <laughs> all right, y'all. Talk to y'all later. Bye.